sleep, Master Chip. Yeah, I never seen anything like it my whole life. Can we stay and watch? We got a boat to run, boy. Seems are ready to leave. Couldn't we watch him take off? No, son. Kind of biting people's heads off today, aren't you? You gonna start in two? Well, I just might. The lad only said. Come on. Sorry, friend, I didn't see it. Why don't you keep your eyes open? You'll get your chance. I said I didn't see it. This guy can't navigate on his own two feet. Can't you just see him sweating the team? No, no, boys, you got it all wrong. I'm not looking for a job driving a wagon. Too rough for you? Or maybe you're afraid some Cherokee might whack you in the head. Watch your tongue, friend. They said there'd be some too yellow to sign on. <laughs> Why did it have to happen here, right here, right in this spot? Every time we reach independence, you get sore at that muddy little town up there. You all right, Captain? Yeah, I'm all right. I suppose I do have something against that muddy little town out there. What did you mean when you said uh, it had to be here, right in that spot? It was right in front of the Justice of the Peace jewelry shop. You haven't got a woman on your mind, have you? A woman? Hi. No, not a woman. A lady. A lady? Well, when do we celebrate the happy day? There'll be no happy day. It's oh, too bad. You know, it's no good keeping things locked up within yourself. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us about it? Come on. Her name was Marion. Uh -huh. Marion Templeton. And how'd you meet her? Well, about a year or so ago, before I met either of you two gentlemen, we were headed for Kingsport. That's in southern Illinois, Chip. Pick up a cargo of passengers and freight on one of the easiest business deals I thought I'd ever made. But there was some unexpected opposition. has commenced. Mr. Schofield, good morning, sir. Where is Mr. Templeton? He's inside. Is anything wrong? Now, gentlemen, this is the latest map we've been able to obtain. It's based on Lansford Hastings' latest explorations and his calculations. 
We rendezvous at Independence with the rest of the party and take on supplies. Then we follow Fremont's route to the mountains. And after the mountains, as the fellow says, downhill all the way. <laughs> California! For the Lord has said, I will lead you unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Gideon. Henry, welcome Henry. My brother-in-law from Springfield, gentlemen, Henry Schofield. I trust you had an agreeable trip, Henry? Yes, yes, thank you. Gideon, I want to talk to you. Yes, of course. Well, perhaps it's time to get your ladies and your uh, serving people ready for the boat, gentlemen. If you have any questions, speak to Stephen Barrows. As my assistant, he has full authority. Take all your gear down to the dock, gentlemen. Once aboard the Enterprise, there's no turning back. And then on to California. Good luck, gentlemen. <laughs> now then, Henry. What's that long, long face all about, huh? Only a newspaper? You should know by now that I'm accustomed to mocking editorials. Read it. The last time they said that I was a... a explosion. Well, this is serious news, Henry. I got it in Kingsport as I came through. It had just come out. I... Excuse me for a moment. I'll have to talk to Stephen. Go ahead. I'll say hello to Marion. Yes. I think she's in her room. Stephen. Yes, sir. I have to talk to you. Henry, forgive me for being such a poor host. Come in. Uncle Henry. Hello, Mary. Oh, I didn't know you'd come. I'd have been downstairs. How's Aunt Laura? She's very well, thank you. And you? Are you excited about going to St. Louis with us? I expect my zeal to bring on a heart condition. Oh. Well, I am putting my girlhood behind me. The things one accumulates in a lifetime. I'm taking nothing that doesn't have real value. Look. I was with your mother when this was painted. Oh. Your grandparents had sent us to Paris for the summer. I assume you know why I'm being dragged to St. Louis? I think I do. Well, you'd better be sure, since it involves every penny your mother left you. You understand I have been asked to sell your bonds. Your father and his eager young assistant would have me turn $40,000, shrewdly invested, into cash. Yes, I understand. It was my idea. As executor of the estate, am I permitted an opinion? Certainly. You're out of your wits. That's my opinion. Papa needs that money, and I want him to have it. Mm, yes. People treat Gideon Templeton as though he were a public monument. You're beginning to sound like a brother-in-law. Uncle Henry, <sighs> Papa's had a very difficult year. With Mother dying and losing the election for governor. Well, now he sees a chance for, for a new life, and, and I think he's entitled to it. You think he's entitled to anything he asks for? So did my sister. Don't run Papa down. He's earned everyone's respect. He's been a state senator. He's, he's devoted himself unselfishly to public service. I think he has a right to all of the help any of us can give him. Marion, can you honestly tell me that you want to go to California? With the world at your feet here, you want to settle in a heathen wilderness? More than anything on earth. Papa's right in what he feels about California. He wants to go there to help, and I want to help him. In spite of the dangers, Dear heaven, there's been one disaster already, and you haven't even started. What disaster? The boat Gideon hired blew up last night. The Enterprise? Why didn't you tell me? Papa would be very sick. Oh, Uncle Henry, you should have told me sooner. Then no matter what I say, I'm just shouting down a rain barrel. No matter what anyone says, I'm going to California. Now, if you'll excuse me, I should be with my father. One more difficulty. Seems to be an endless series of setbacks. You mustn't talk that way, Papa. We have no boat. Mr. Templeton, I might suggest the American Avenger, Captain O'Banion. I believe she's due in Kingsport. Is she sound? Well, yes, sir, as far as I know. Find Captain O'Banion at once, Stephen. Hurry. Ain't that a miserable way to come limping into port on one lung? When did this come out? This morning. They sell them all over town.
Connie. Yes, sir. Connie, didn't you say that that new Stoker jumped boat right after the explosion? Well, I reckon. You don't blame him, do you? Yeah. Uh, get it fixed, Connie. Get it fixed. Ben, see this woods load up as fast as you can, huh? Gray, what's the matter with you? Don't you know what this is all about? No. It takes a printer a full day to set up a page like this. Now, that means they must have known about the explosion before it happened. This was no ordinary boiler explosion. It was rigged. Some son of a snake is trying to steal my contracts. Now, you meet me at Templeton's Landing as fast as you can get there, huh? Well, Mr. Carney, isn't that boiler fixed yet? Mr. Templeton. Jimmy O'Banion. I might have known. Captain Holden. Good morning, Mr. Templeton. You dirty sneak thief. Well, Holden, I heard that the... I know what you heard. I know where you heard it from. Mr. Templeton, the Enterprise can be here by evening. Now, does my contract that you still hold? Of course. That's all I wanted to find out. O'Banion, if you ever try stealing another contract from me, I'm going to kick you and your entire crew all the way from here to Natchez. What, Gray? I... <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. Oh, <laughs> Perhaps you two should meet formally, Captain, my daughter, Marion. How do you do? This is not your boat, Captain Holden. This is a respectable home. Oh, my mother had this table imported from England. It survived an ocean crossing, the Indian Wars, and, and 12 years of service, but not your brawling. If you've concluded your negotiations, shall I order tea? Yes, darling. You will stay, won't you, Captain? It's his house. My daughter's a trifle high-strung, Captain. You mustn't mind. Mind? Mind her? <laughs> Having a nice time? Charming people. Is this the group you're taking to California with you? I suppose you don't approve either. Well, my approval has nothing to do with it. But it's a rough trip. We might surprise you with our hardihood. Besides... You're getting a contract, aren't you? Lady, I'm sorry if I appear uncouth to you, but your father was marked down for one of the oldest hoaxes on the river. Hoaxes? Hoaxes. They make you think your boat isn't coming, so you hire another one too quickly, and then it begins. They start charging you extra for everything. Food, fuel, supplies, everything. Before they're through, they bled you dry just to keep on schedule. You saved us from that? I also saved a job for my boat, which we need badly. Now, if that makes me a boor, I can't help it. I've been very rude to you, Captain Holden. I apologize. Well, uh, just try not to spit in my eye the next time you see me. I'll try. A pair of fumbling incompetents. No, Steve, we've done our part. Holden just moves too fast. That's all right, right, all right, then we'll move faster. You'll have to sail this morning, Jimmy. Get well ahead of Holden. You can pick up some extra men in Cairo. And then somewhere up along the Missouri River, hijack us. The Missouri? Well, that's two weeks away. Mm. Has to be the other side of St. Louis. It'll mean $40,000 more. Now look, Steve, if they were on my boat, it'd be easy. But tangling with the Enterprise... You're not going to back out, either one of you. There won't be another chance like this, O'Banion. Where could I possibly find someone as ripe as Templeton? A group of people as rich as these. They're going to be carrying a fortune. There'd be a lot of boys in Cairo who'd relish a fight. That'd mean they'd be killing. Well, now, I don't care what it means. I'm not going to miss this chance. You get up to Missouri and pick the spot for it. You can leave Nolan and St. Louis to report to me. Jimmy. One third of a fortune. Now, I'm counting on you. Well, Mr. 
temples in sir. Very trim boat you have, Captain. Just what I'd hoped for. Why, thank you, sir. You are in cabins three and five, Jimmy. Three and five. May I? If you'll come with me, I have something to show you. You fixed it. Oh. How did you manage it so soon? It takes many skills to run a riverboat. I happen to have a very fine ship's carpenter on board. That was a very thoughtful thing to do. You seem to set some store by it. Yes. These past few weeks, everything around my home has seemed so... so precious. You'll be back one day. Won't you? Why would someone like you want to spend her life in the wilderness? That's a long story. Well, well, it will take us four weeks to reach independence. Perhaps you'll feel more like telling me about it by then. As it turned out, I couldn't wait any four weeks because, well, because Marion was Marion and I was looking for any excuse to be near her. Rocky foothills of the mountains. It was difficult going for our livestock. We had to urge them every foot of the way. How would you like to make a wager? Any stake you name that your daughter never gets past St. Louis and those bonds you're so eager for never leave the trust company. I'm surprised at you, Henry. Don't you know a shipboard flirtation when you see one? <laughs> Care to bet? You, Stephen? This is not a subject for sport, Henry. And seemed to surround us. There we made camp for the night. Not fearful, yet ever vigilant to the perils of the forest. Oh, don't stop now. Go on. I was getting interested. That'll be all, children. Thank you. You're very fond of children, aren't you? Very. I expect to have lots of them. Oh. Hundreds. That's why I'm going to California. Teach school. Oh! <laughs> hey, what were you reading to them? Oh, Captain Fremont's account of his explorations. Johnny Fremont? I wonder how he found time to write a book. Johnny, you don't know him. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, sure. We carried him and some of his troops all the way up to Fort Leavenworth on something. Captain John C. Fremont? Mm hmm But oh, he's a great man. The Riverboat Enterprise is a great boat. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just that, well, he's sort of a legend to us. My father's whole travel plan is based in his book. Oh? And one other. Oh, what's that? Lansford Hastings' Guide for Immigrants to Oregon and California. Oh. You know Hastings, too? Uh, yes, yes, as well as I want to. Tell me, Marion, is this all that you folks know about the West, what you read in a couple of books? No, Stephen Barrows has taught us a lot. He's been there. I hope he's been further west than Lansford Hastings. All the way to the ocean. Marion. Marion, do you realize there are no schools in California for you to teach in? Yes. Do you realize that California's a foreign country? It's part of Mexico. Well, of course I do. But I'm going to build my own school. For whom? There aren't enough Americans to count on one hand in the entire Southwest. But there will be in time. We're going to build a whole new society. Prosperous and, and, and peace-loving. More perfect than the world has ever seen. Perfect? Yes. Perfect as in utopia? Is that what you folks believe? My father believes it, so do I. Utopia. Heaven on earth under a fig tree. Let's not talk about it if you won't take it seriously. I take everything about you seriously, don't you know that? I was beginning to think so. Marion, I'm seriously worried about you. People get killed trying to cross those prairies. 
It takes months to get there. You could get caught in the snow. I don't think I like the idea of you getting yourself killed. Why do you move away from me? You shouldn't talk to me that way. You give me one good reason, and I'll be quiet. Marion, I'm not fooling. You tell me now that you're not interested. And I'll turn around and walk right out of here and go back to running my riverboat. Well, then don't move away from me. Oh, Gray. We can't get into these feelings. I'm not free. I, I'm tied to a duty, a responsibility. You're tied to your father. Oh, no. No to what he believes in. Oh, I had such dreams and plans and... What about plans of your own? There'll be time. Later. Later. Oh, Gray. Oh, take me outside and... and walk me around the deck. Wilmot's Landing. That's the most likely. It's miles from nowhere. I'll have to stop for wood there. It's the only logical place. Hey, I just heard. The word is the Enterprise is due to dock here in St. Louis. In two days. Two days? I better get the boat started up right now if I want to stay ahead of them. Hey. Wilmot's Landing. That's the rendezvous. Wilmot's Landing. Bearers, you and me, a third of a fortune apiece. Jump at the gun, aren't you? You still got to take care of Holden. Now, you take care of your end. You leave Holden to Bearers and me. Tell me, Captain Holden, don't you believe in the expansion and settlement of the West? Oh, yes, naturally, naturally. But I, I think it takes a good deal of skill and knowledge. Of course. And courage and vision. It mustn't be left entirely to riffraff. You don't have any riffraff traveling with you, do you, sir? Captain, I don't think that you quite understand the Templeton party. All we're doing is heading west with a somewhat higher purpose than merely making money. That's because you've got money, Gideon. Uncle Henry. Marion, people aren't riffraff just because they're poor. I'm not suggesting that they are. I'm simply telling you that people of privilege, of breeding, of experience and leadership, these are the people that can bring a new vision to the country, not, well, not riffraff. You know, sir, I've known many people who've gone west and who've accomplished much with nothing to offer but guts and desire. Gray, there's no need to run everything down. You don't change the world by withdrawing from it, Marion. And you don't get to be governor, sir, by moving somewhere and taking your voters along with you. what you're trying to accomplish, Captain. I'm trying to get you to look at yourselves, all of you. Believe me, sir, I admire high ideals. But, sir, I've seen parties head for the West, and I've seen them straggle back, those who survived. People who are accustomed to hardship, who are aware of what lies ahead, sometimes make it. But, sir, you're not equipped. Look at them, Mr. Templeton, look at them. Driver Cummings, a disbarred attorney who hasn't drawn a sober breath since he set foot on board my boat. Then Dr. Cordell, a nice boy and a good missionary, but he's barely 20 years old. They've all volunteered. They've made their own choices. What have you been telling them, Mr. Barrows? What have you been reading them out of Lansford Hastings' book? I read that book, sir. I don't believe a word of it. It's a fairy tale. That's enough, Holden. Stephen, I think we can have dinner in my cabin. Yes, sir.
Captain, there's been some gossip about my daughter on this boat. I'd like it to stop. I can't guarantee what people will talk about, sir. Nevertheless, Marion's plans are settled. I don't think they should be interfered with. <laughs> yes, Captain. I think you're on the right track. I don't want to break her heart. No, just open her eyes. <laughs> when do we get to St. Louis? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Well, then, if I were you, I shouldn't waste a moment. No, no, no. Let me talk to you. You can leave it open. that you're trying to do to me. Hold you, keep you near me. Going about it very strangely. It's the only way I know. Well, if you're fond of me, I, I, I can't understand you're attacking someone I love. I'm only attacking what I think will harm you. Marion, I like your father. I think he's a fine man with a distinguished record behind him and the possibility of a distinguished future. But it's not your future. Oh, it has to be. He needs me. And I love you. I'm asking you not to go west with the rest of them. I'm asking you... I'm asking you to marry me. I, I can't, Gray. Look at me, Marion. Maybe what I'm offering you here isn't very much, isn't very much at all compared to what you're used to. But it'll be your own. It'll be your own life you're living, not your mother's or your father's dream. Is there anything wrong with his dream? Yes, they're going to harm other people. Oh. Marion, he's going west for the wrong reasons. They hurt him very badly back in Illinois. He's going somewhere where he can have it his own way if he can't be... A governor, he's going to be a king. You know I'm right. But don't we have an obligation to, to, to go out there and, and, and build? And... No, no, not for a few hand-picked people. What do you think I'm doing here? In its own way, this scow running up and down the muddy rivers of this country builds something. Every month we carry trappers, frontiersmen, People who'll go out and set up industries, clear lands. We fought side by side with the troops that we've carried here to make the West safe. We've carried explorers to map it. We've carried immigrants to settle it. But we've carried no kings. Will he be all right if I'm not with him? He'll be better. He'll lean on you as long as you let him. But he'll be better if he stands alone. I always thought you were as eager as I was, Marion. The way your mother would have been. Your mother gave so much to me. I wasn't anything at all until I met her. She had that glitter that drew people to us. She had the grace and the poise to charm them. And she had the money to support my career. She loved you. Yes. I love Gray. Well, then it's your decision. Papa, want your blessing. Please, please, don't make me feel heartless if I want to go on without you. I'm a proud man, Marion. I'm energetic. I think I do mostly good in this world. But I've always needed a great deal of help.
We'll have to tell him later on. You want me to talk to him? Not yet. He'll understand in time. Okay. Hold me. Pull on about six o'clock, then I'll give the temple party enough time to do all the errands. Right. Wait a minute, I'll get on the boat with you. Then I got a couple of errands to do myself. I gotta buy a ring if the jeweler will trust me. And then I gotta have a long talk with Reverend Harrison. Oh, I'm sorry I can't be here, Gray. I wanted to be the best man. Yeah, well, so am I. But we need that boiler. You gotta get in that boat to New Orleans. You're finally gonna get married, huh? Yeah. Well, I hope you're gonna be happy, Gray. So do I. You don't sound too sure. Uh, well, I'm not. But then I've never been happier about doing something that I'm not sure of before. Oh, Stoker who jumped my boat. When he is missing. Oh, Banyan, isn't it? He'll turn up in time. You messed up our plans once, Holden. You're not going to do it again. What a bet. <laughs> Nearly midnight. This is absurd. Six hours delay. Well, Stephen, did you find him? Mr. Templeton, I've turned this town inside out. I, uh, I even had the sheriff's office helping me. There's not a sign of Alden to be found. That's just not possible. A, a man can't simply disappear. I'm sorry, Marion. Marion. I think you need some rest. What is it you won't tell me? There's, there's nothing, really. I wish I had some explanation. Now, come along, dear. I'll see you back to your cabin. You've won, Gideon. The money's in your cabin. I'll say goodbye before you leave. Of course, you realize the crew won't leave until they find out what's become of Holden. Oh, we have to. We can't afford to fall any farther behind schedule. Well, I didn't want to say anything in front of Marion, not just yet. But I know where Holden is. You do? At this moment, he's well on his way to New Orleans. No, I don't believe it. Sir, he was seen by at least a dozen people aboard the Duchess of Missouri, just before she sailed. Why would he want to do a thing like that? Well, we've all heard how it is with a footloose, carefree man once he's involved with a woman. He develops certain uh, reservations. First chance he sees to leave, he leaves. I don't believe Holden would run out on anything. And besides, I certainly don't have authority to move this boat. Mr. Templeton, your $3,500 fee gives you authority. Now, we have a contract that specifically states we'll not pay one penny if we're late. I'll go below, sir. I'll have the engineer fire up his boilers. Uh, incidentally, if you're worried, I'm quite certain the first mate can handle the pilotage now that we've reached the easy part of the trip. need to starve. Oh. I just have coffee.
Once free, I headed for the Enterprise, but she'd gone. I remembered that because of a bend in the river, I had a chance of catching up. I just had to stay ahead of the boat. I found an old trapper who said he hadn't seen the Enterprise go by, so I was in luck. I headed for Wilmot's Landing, an uh, isolated wood stop that looked like a logical place for a hijack. Sure enough, O'Banion was there ahead of me. I went back to that old rowboat, thinking I could lay in wait for the Enterprise and climb aboard. Figured it would be easy to do because we go slow at night. I'll tell you all about it in a minute. But right now, we've got a lot more important things to do. This is the key to my cabin. I'll go up there and get the guns out of my locker and distribute them around to the crew. It's the boiler gang, the deck gang, everybody. But don't tell one of them that I'm back. And above all, don't disturb those fancy passengers up there. Well, what's up? We're about to be hijacked the next wood stop. Old Banyan's there with half the drunks from Carroll. Well, why don't we bypass them? We got plenty of wood. Not on your life. I want the Templeton party to know exactly why they were brought here. But I don't want one of them harmed. You understand? Yes, sir. All right, go to. All right, you knotheads. We're supposed to be loading wood. Bring it aboard. Templeton? What is it, Marion? What are they doing? They've been waiting for us all along, Papa. Well, I don't... Where's Stephen? Stephen! Looks like we're going to be here for a while, Mr. Templeton. Might as well be comfortable. Have a chair. Papa! Oh, Papa! Papa, are you all right? Very honorable and spirited, Mr. Templeton, but not very wise. Stephen, can't we do something? They'll rob us of everything. You're one of them. We all have dreams, Mr. Templeton. Do you know what mine have been for the past few years? This. Just this moment. I'm a man of simple taste, really. I can live the rest of my life on this one day's work. You Judas. Huh? Perhaps, Marion, perhaps. But don't say it again. <gasps> you used me, Barrows. You betrayed me! Oh, Mr. Templeton. Captain Holden was right about you. The king of California. Oh, All right, let's begin. I believe I have the entire cargo listed here. Mrs. Parker. Mr. and Mrs. Donald Parker, cabin 12. Two Persian rugs, general household goods. Mr. Ivar Cummings, Sedalia, cabin 8. Household silver and linens. Mr. Edward Lewis in cabin 7. Dressed in figurines, that's all. Two Persian rugs. Size 12 by 18. And next we have Miss Della Goforth, cabin three. Temple's had enough time now to learn his lesson. Bob, you take your men. Go in the front of the salon. I'll go in this way. Mr. Myron Daniels, cabin nine. Two braces French dueling pistols, one hunting piece, 11 small etchings, and one marble statue of Italian origin. Mr. and Mrs. Arthur Watkins, cabin five, 86 yards of gold lame draperies. Three carpets, two ladies' fur coats, two trunks of expensive clothing and general household furnishings. Then, Now, Captain O'Banion, we'll check Miss Templeton's room. There's a sum of money we mustn't overlook. Hold it!
Doctors, you're nothing but a double-crossing cheat. I... Get him! Killing was too much for me. Let him rest. Well, I'd better get to the pilot house. Yes. Get us to Independence, Gray. I'm going to tell all the people who are waiting for us to go back home. All I want to do is just to forget about the Templeton party. I knew what Marion was going through. The end of a dream. That's what really had hurt her father, too, as much as anything. But when we finally got to Independence, the excitement about moving west was in the air. It did wonders for old Gideon Templeton. And Marion saw that. Come in. Gray, can you come to Papa's cabin? It's important. What's the matter? Just come with me. It could work out perfectly. You gentlemen would be in charge, of course. My group would simply join your party. I met them when I went ashore. They, they asked to see Papa immediately. Don't you understand now, Holden? What objections can there be now? This group is strong, well organized. We'd be honored to have your people join our party, Mr. Templeton. Thank you, gentlemen. Marion. I was wrong. I can see that now. I was deluded. Vain. And selfish. But I'm willing to change. Any man can change. I won't be in charge any longer. I'll be just another settler. Will you come with me? I need you, Marion. I need your help. Which route do you plan to take, gentlemen? We'll go to the High Sierras, proceed directly over them, into the land they call California. Splendid. Just give me a while. And I'll come back to you as soon as Papa's on his feet. Will you wait for me? I'll wait for you. I have to go, you understand, don't you? I understand. It, it's not just our people, it's, it's our future. The future of our whole country. Gray, a few years ago, a party of settlers was crossing the desert. They saw a cloud after a thunderstorm that formed the image of an eagle. And the sun behind it cast the shadow of an eagle all the way to the mountains. Well, they took this as an omen, as a sign that the eagle of this country must spread its wings all the way to the ocean. Well, that's where Papa must go. And I with him. Well, I can't very well argue with that, can I? I don't even know the names of the men in charge. I don't even know the name of your party. George and Jacob Donner. They called their group the Donner Party. Beautiful, darling. Take care of yourself now. For me. I will, and you too. 
Thanks for everything, Captain. the Donner Party. But not from them, only from the signs that marked their dying. Did anyone live for the Donner Party, Captain? Oh, some, Chip, some. But no one that I knew. Well, maybe if she was still alive. Come on, come on, Chip. We've got a boat to run. Captain, hmm? is that why you never got married? Well, it could be, Chip, could be. But you mind your own business now. I don't pry into your affairs, do I? All right, go on. You got a boat to run now. Yes, sir.